Hey there, folks. Welcome to the Crazy Libertarian. You are, of course, on 88.1 FM Fargo, K Triple P L P Fargo. That call in number is 701 566 0917. So I'm going to get right to the chase here. I uh, got a very special guest here today. This is David Owen of Legalize ND. And uh, introduce yourself, Dave. Tell, tell us a little bit about yourself. So I'm the chairman of Legalize ND. It's the group that was responsible for Measure 3. Um, it had a supporting role in Measure 5, although it was very minor. And our big initiative was Measure 3, which in the last cycle was defeated approximately 41 to 59, depending on how you want to round it, um, in that election. And as a result, it did not pass. And so we're trying again for full legalization of marijuana. And we are in the signature collecting phase for our new measure. Well, it's not new anymore, but our measure that we're currently collecting for. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess let's get right into the meat and bones of it. What is the, because, you know, assuming that some people, especially if you're on a station like this, have heard of Measure 3 or at least have a passing idea, what's the what's new this time? What's, what's different about this measure? So there were a couple fundamental concerns with Measure 3, right? The first concern was the lack of a regulatory framework for first day. That mm -hmm. was concern number one. Um, so what we did is we created a marijuana advisory commission. We've created an optional 11-person board that can be appointed by the governor. We've created a clear track and trace, and we've prescribed all the regulations. The second concern was over home grow and how would that work, whether or not it was a good idea. And North Dakotans overwhelmingly believed that home grow was not something that we should do. In other words, they said, we don't want home grow. And I said, okay, fine, we won't have home grow. And the second was concerns over possession limits because they didn't want people to basically be able to go buy 500 pounds of pot and become their own black market drug dealer okay well, it ain't gonna happen folks but fine <laughs> um we created a possession limit of an ounce and a half which is more than reasonable um, mm -hmm. especially for uh, recreational use yeah I, I wish it were higher but that's enough where you're not going through that in a night mm -hmm. you're not gonna get up and go through an ounce and a half if you're going through more than an ounce a day You've There's got something problems. sketchy going on. Well, not you've got problems. It, it ain't possible. Yeah. Something sketchy's going on there. Yeah. It ain't all for you. Let's put it that <laughs> way. Um, so we created a possession and control limit on it. And we created a track and trace program so we know how much is flowing in and out of the dispensaries, how much is being bought of what. Okay. And the last thing that people are concerned about is marketing towards children, right? Mm -hmm. we, we've all seen the shitty – am I allowed to curse on this one? No, we're not, we've, no we'll bleep it. Sorry, we've all seen the um, gummy commercials where it's broadcasting, advertising towards children and all that. And at the end of the day, we decided let's create plain packaging. Let's create clear packaging rules that it doesn't market towards children. And it just describes what it is. And it's in a childproof container. Okay. So you've kind of, uh, you got ahead of a lot of what the yeah. people were going against. Well, this is our second time. So we looked at what were the concerns last time and how do we address them and how do we meet you kind of in the middle, right? Mm -hmm. That was the goal. All right. So that's kind of what's different about this branch of it uh, this time. So I kind of want to get into a little bit of like, you know, what was your personal, why did you decide to jump into this particular arena you know what i mean so you're it's, not it's you're, criminal, you're not super duper yeah, high paid without speaking yeah. too much oh it's it, it's fairly the, public what i make yeah off of this i don't make enough to cover my gas folks um to be honest with you the main reason for me is it's a social social and criminal justice issue right i don't want people going to jail for something that's harmless and i don't like what happens after you go to jail okay because everyone says oh the problem is people going to jail no that that is a problem it's not the problem Mm -hmm. The problem is what happens when you get out. And let's go through what happens when you get out. You have a criminal record, which means you're not able to get housing in most cases. You can't get student loans, go back and finish your education. You are discriminated to a degree, and rightfully so, right? You mm -hmm. think if someone had a felony or a misdemeanor, you got the check we the box. may not want them to have a job dealing yep. with money or something mm -hmm. like that. So they're to some degree discriminated against, and we can argue whether or not that's right. I'd, I'd say it's reasonable mm -hmm. if you saw someone with a record not to want to employ them, and a lot of people come to that conclusion. So as a result, they aren't able to find employment. And who ends up paying for that? Well, ultimately me. Okay? Mm -hmm. You or me or the taxpayer ends up paying for this because they're on social services. And then there's just the fundamental issue of why. What are we seeking to accomplish here? When we have people go to prison – it's usually because they are a danger to society. At least that's the thought. Mm -hmm. I don't mind paying to lock a rapist up, for example. Yeah, because Ted I Bundy don't want, should be in prison. I, I don't want women violently assaulted. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't mind sending a guy who drives drunk to prison 
because he could have killed a family of four. Mm -hmm. I don't mind paying for that. I have no problem with that. Prison is for dangerous people, not for people who smoked a plant and went to bed. Mm -hmm. Um, The joke is the only victim of marijuana uses pizza boxes. (laughs) (laughs) And and to some degree, that's true. Mm -hmm. So why are we sending this person to prison? It's not because they're a dangerous society, clearly. Mm -hmm. It's not going to accomplish anything. And all it means is you and I have to pay for them for the next uh, 30, 40, 50 years. Mm -hmm. And on a personal level, I'll give you a story. I don't tell this very often. I had a buddy when I was in high school. And we were at a party, a guy named Teddy's House. This is his nickname. Big giant of a man. And at that party, guy got involved and there was some marijuana at the event. Now, I left early. And ultimately what happened is the cops showed up. And because of that, everyone there got petty possession. Everyone. Basically, it was all, you couldn't figure out whose paraphernalia it was. Mm. So if they're all kind of in the same house and it's the last 10 people, you know how the hangarounds go. Mm-hmm. Party's kind of over, last couple people rolling out the door. Whose is it? Uh, who's to say? And the best option here is plead out because you know you're going to go in front of a court and it's risky, mm-hmm. right? Because the police officer say, here's the list of charges that could apply. Yep. Here's the best case. Here's the worst case. And the lawyer goes, well, you were there. Right. Yep. And so let's plea it out. And you so want to take that role. Yeah. So he's no longer able to serve his country. He was set to deploy to basic at Fort Bragg um, a couple, about a month later. I think he would have gone right after he graduated high school. So called a month, month and a half later. And instead, he's given community service because in Maryland, which is where I grew up, it was fairly lenient, but still has a criminal record. Can't join the military. Now he can't go to school. So his job prospects completely screwed up. And I think nowadays he's like a roadie for, um, well, he was for Lincoln Park. I don't know what he does nowadays. He, he got involved in the music scene. And kid wanted to go serve his country and was told no for a pot charge. Really? Really? Nonsense. Really? <laughs> Oh, and I'll, I'll quote my grandpa on this one, um, my papa. I mean, he grew up in North Carolina. And what he said is, son, back in my day, we would have sent him to the Army. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what they <laughs> straighten them out, right? Yeah, ain't that the truth? It used to be you can either go to prison or you can join the Army. Mm-hmm. So, and nowadays it's, no, you can't join the Army and you've got to go and... Can't do a whole lot of other things that are necessary in order to advance in life at that yeah. point. You're done. Mm-hmm. And then, and, and he didn't come from means. He couldn't afford school out of his own pocket. Mm-hmm. And he can't get student loans. His parents didn't have means to send him. So, mm-hmm. and then I mean, and just think about how many stories there are like that. Complete waste of potential and waste of talent. Mm-hmm. And the the really kind of sick thing about it too is that, like you said, in that situation where there were ten people who it theoretically could have been. It seems that we've come to accept a system where we're willing to completely toss out 10 people's future, including at least one dude that could have gone on to be, I mean, I don't know the dude personally. He could have gone on to be like a two-star general or something amazing, right? Like he, could, he, he wasn't that bright, Foster. <laughs> <laughs> um, so he, pr- he wanted to be career. So mm-hmm. how the military works is there's the enlisted system and then there's the officer system. Officer system is typically for people with a college degree. There are some exceptions, but typically you don't go to the officer track unless you have a college degree or substantial time in service. So he would have gone the enlisted route. How far he would have made it, I don't know. But we're talking like, I want to say a a master sergeant is where it tops out for enlisted. If memory serves me. Still, very important role. Yeah. And then... uh, did they only find paraphernalia? Was it like, I assume that we're not talking like they came in and there was like five pounds on the table. No, right? we're talking like... petty amounts. I, I don't remember what the exact charges were. This was 10 years ago mm-hmm. at this point. Um, we're talking petty amounts. The thing was they were going to charge them all with petty possession or you could plead it down to the paraphernalia. Wow. Wow. Great use of potential right there. Yeah. So I want to kind of pivot for a second and uh you know obviously doing something like this in north dakota has a lot of people asking you what the hell you're doing it in north dakota because this is you know so one of the most red rural states what's what's your pitch for for lack of better term you have to establish that this is not a partisan issue Mm -hmm. if this becomes a seen as a partisan issue you are at the mercy of three things having to be true as long as it's seen as partisan 
Number one, you've got to have the correct party in the House. Number two, you need 60 votes in the Senate. Number three, you need the White House or you need two-thirds in the House and the Senate. Mm -hmm. That's not going to happen. Mm -mm. The odds of having all three at two-thirds, Obama didn't have Mm two-thirds. At his peak, he did not have 60 votes. Never. Um, I think the last time you had a filibuster-proof Senate was like Roosevelt. Yeah, it's been a very, very, very long time. So it's not going to happen. Okay. To think about it this way, we're talking about a Senate where 54, 46, mm-hmm. and that's seen as a heavy Republican majority in the Senate right now. Mm-hmm. You're not going to get to 60, either party. It, it's very logistically difficult. Mm-hmm. That means you need to control roughly 30 states. Yeah, which isn't going to happen with how partisan this. I mean, there's yeah. only one state with the split uh, local state house and Senate, and that's Minnesota. So to think that you're going to get some. Yeah, you, there's just not enough states to mm-hmm. do it. Um, and this shows the other thing. It shouldn't be a partisan issue. Mm-hmm. So why North Dakota? Because North Dakota shows that this is not partisan. So I'll, I'll give you some numbers. Wayne Stenger, 70% of the vote. Dave Thompson, 30, roughly. Mm-hmm. Wayne Stenger's the Republican. Dave Thompson's the Democrat. Uh, we'll use the more extreme example. Marvin Nelson, 20 and some change. Doug Burgum, 75 to 78. So that means the Republican base is about 70% of the electorate here. Mm-hmm. We got 41% of the vote. That means let's assume every single Democrat voted yes on legalization. Which they we didn't. know for a fact that did not happen. Yeah, Heidi Heitkamp is one who didn't. Mm-hmm. She flat out said she wasn't going to. So even if you assume that we got every single Democrat, we still got about a third of all Republicans. Mm-hmm. Now, is a third great? No, but... It's a start. It's a start. And, and we're, we're assuming a ridiculous premise here. We're assuming, again, that we got literally everyone. We didn't. Mm-hmm. Um, so my goal here is to show that it's not partisan. And what are the implications of North Dakota passing? That's, that's what nobody talks about. Well, let's pretend North Dakota passes, and I, I think it will. I hope it will. Knock um, on wood. So let's go through what happens. You have a state that's R plus 60. That legalizes marijuana. Argument's over. Everyone wakes up the next day and goes... You know what? Legal recreational marijuana is not controversial. Let's Mm -hmm. get it done. That's true. It's just like how we're finally getting banking protections for medical. It didn't happen when Colorado legalized. didn't happen when California legalized. didn't happen when Nevada legalized. When did it happen? Missouri. Oklahoma. Mm Mm-hmm. Oklahoma's been big in pushing the right on it. Right. They have a real medical program at North Dakota legislators. And at, at, well, at the end of the day, the point remains, you didn't see traction at the federal level until you saw red states starting to do it. That's a very true point. It, uh, the Once you see that, especially in a place like, you know, Missouri and Oklahoma and North Dakota, you don't get any more red than out here. I mean, Mississippi. Yeah. Maybe. And even they're pushing for medical marijuana. They're even in the South. There's petitions going around. There's, they don't have the ballot initiative process is the problem. Um, in some of the states, they do. Florida's the last one in the South that mm-hmm. does. And they're not going to make the ballot in Florida. Which Sorry is sad. Not. Well, well that, that hurts me personally, but we're not going to talk about why. Yeah. And enough about Florida. But so what we've really kind of seen is that it's like, you know, it's not such a crazy concept right no it's it's not such a crazy partisan it's not out of this world to see medical programs in red states north dakota has a medical program Mm -hmm. it's not a great medical program (laughs) it needs a lot of help but we got it yep um well oklahoma as we already mm -hmm. stated i mean one of the best in the entire nation you don't get more bible belt than oklahoma (laughs) yeah i'm sorry texas that is the buckle on the bible belt yeah i'm I'm sorry texas but oklahoma's got you beat Mm -hmm. um so medical is no longer controversial the yeah. goal is to see, the hope is that rec won't be. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so you got to start somewhere. So, how are you planning on like you know obviously uh you know in Fargo here whichever side the signs on the argument's a little bit different than yeah, let's say if you're in the western part of the state. So, what's your uh, what's the legalize ND uh, kind of pitch to the more rural places? Because you the know, more for rural lack of a places, place, it's it's simple. You, you've got you've got a lot of tax issues in your local areas. Let's look at Zap, North Dakota. Okay, Zap is a town ah, zip of color. to Zap. Oh, oh. Okay, me- memes aside. <laughs> historic North Dakota riots aside. Um, <laughs> uh, you've got 300 people there. I got a buddy. 
uh, named Dustin. Uh, I won't give his last name, but he's not hard to figure out who it is. One third of 1% of the population. So Dusty has family there and they just had to do a special assessment and they hit every part, every uh, land subdivision with a $15,000 special assessment to repair the roads. Because they've got to repair the roads. I mean, you've got to have roads to drive the farm equipment on. Mm -hmm. One small problem. Home ain't worth $45,000. So we are now spending more than the properties are worth in property taxes to try and help these small towns. So what does legalization do? It brings in tax revenue. It Mm -hmm. brings in an alternative funding mechanism. It also brings in a new cash crop. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about hemp, right? Chris Adams would be much better about this than I am. And I know you still need your fact sheet, Chris. I'm sorry. Um, Chris Adams, big farmer, winner of producer of the year. And he woke up one morning and said, you know what? We're going to do hemp. Why? Because <laughs> conventional crops aren't bringing in what they used to. Mm-hmm. Look, at the, look at the, the soil sh- too. Look at the sugar beets. Oh, L- look at that. You mean where they had to pay money for the privilege of not being able to harvest them this year? 600 Horrible. Grand. It hit my family for, I think, 600 grand. <sighs> Something like that. If memory serves me, I'm trying to do the math in my head. 600 grand is what we owe Crystal Sugar. No, more than that. Two thirds of a million almost for the privilege of not being able to grow sugar beets. Um, Corn. We need some diversification. Corn is messed up. Mm -hmm. Hemp will grow in Siberia. Yeah. (laughs) Hemp doesn't mind water. There's a reason it was called weed, folks, (laughs) because it grew like a weed. It It grows basically everywhere. You can get strains of it. And strains for people in the more traditional agronomic nomenclature, they would use um, germ varieties Mm -hmm. or varieties. We, in the marijuana world, use strain for some reason. I don't know why. But you can get germ varieties that will grow in Siberia. Now, I know it feels like it's as cold as Siberia here, (laughs) but it's not. Um, So it's a great place of diversification. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's a huge plus you can go towards hemp farming and it's going to be lucrative. Mm -hmm. And the goal is to get that under crop insurance and credit where credit is due. Mitch McConnell. Yep. We we don't say his name often in this issue, but we do not. Mitch McConnell got it done. The turtle who could, he got crop insurance for hemp now. So now hemp has federal crop insurance. Mm -hmm. So there's a huge step. There's the huge agricultural benefits Mm -hmm. and there's the tax revenue. And then there's the fact of, do you know how much it costs to throw someone in jail for a year? Boy, isn't it way more than what it costs to send the college? Uh, it's it's about four years of NDSU because you graduated what last year? Mm-hmm. May of nineteen. So you spent, call it forty grand going to school. Yep, more about. Yeah, so we spend about that to throw someone in jail for a year. So I want to reiterate: we can literally give someone a four-year free ride to NDSU, and it would be on a per-year basis a quarter of the cost. Of throwing them in jail. Wow. It, it we talk make, about how crazy education costs have gotten, but man. It, it don't make fiscal sense. Mm-mm. So even if, and that goes back to the dangerous argument we talked about before. I have no problem paying $40,000 to keep a rapist out of the community. Mm-hmm. I have no problem for the axe murderer. Mm-hmm. I have no problem sending the drunk to jail for a month when they drive. Yep. I don't have a problem sending a guy petty assault mm-hmm. to jail. I do not mind paying for that. Yep. I don't think you meet a reasonable person who goes, I mind that we have to throw that guy in prison. You won't meet a reasonable person who thinks that. Mm-hmm. I do mind nonviolent, non-dangerous people mm-hmm. costing me $40,000. Yep. Oh, and then we send them to drug rehab, by the way. This is how stupid the system is. They then have to go to mandatory drug rehab which the government ultimately pays for because they haven't had a job for a year. So guess what they're on? Medicaid. <laughs> so not only do we pay the 40 we then pay for their drug rehab which is another 20 it's dumb it's just rehab. straight dumb rehab for marijuana of all things i mean i get it if we have someone that's heavily addicted to opiates or methamphetamine you know. different yeah. cocaine and clearly different can i just say really quickly that i find it particularly outrageous that we're like because all of this is like claimed to be in some way for society's benefit and then you get a bunch of people that 
you know, got really hot, that got high and attacked a bag of chips and because of that had to go to jail or prison or wherever. And then they're actually spending time with people that are in there for really horrendous things. You know what I mean? You're taking a big section of nonviolent people. And like we've said on the show other times, jails and prisons, even though we've made reforms in this state, are generally not a very fun place to be. No. Not great for your self-development. Doesn't help you make better life choices. Jails and prisons ultimately build better criminals. Yep, that is, that is it. We can't even keep the drugs that's, out of prisons. That's the resi- well, even Warden Satrin in his bizarre satanic cult story, he talks about how cops are literally smuggling the drugs into the prison for the prisoners. That was story two. YouTube legalize ND. The full sixteen minute testimony is available. Shameless plug. But he tells the story of how the cops were literally bringing smuggling the drugs into the <laughs> prison for the prisoners who were there for drug charges. <laughs> <laughs> really <laughs> and we're great system great system works <laughs> 10 out of 10 <laughs> 10 out of 10 would spend forty thousand dollars a year per inmate on <laughs> not to mention the costs that we're paying to build the prisons and pay the guards the and drug rehab no. and not to mention the guards pension no we included that, so. guard salary and pension in there to be fair oh. we did i'll give at least I- that's I'll give like them a little that. we don't do deferred maintenance but a we don't more maintain fiscal. things in the state but that that's, is true. that's another bone for another day mm-hmm <laughs> So we have all of these resources, and it's just completely going to waste, right? Yeah, and so, the other one that everyone brings up, and I, I have to address this. Well, right. what about workplace safety? Fair. I don't want people showing up stoned to work. Mm-hmm. Well, Legalize ND did the research, and we used the Bureau of Labor Statistics, and we pulled the workplace incident rates for every state that has legal marijuana. And this was from the United States government. It was their statistics. Mm-hmm. And what we found is per capita injury rates and per capita workforce incident rates are down or constant in every single state that legalized. All of them, but I believe two are down. The hmm. rest are statistically the same. And so um, no difference. At per capita. At absolute, there's one that's up, but the population of said state went up 30%. Mm-hmm. When you have thirty percent more people, it goes to reason you'd have thirty percent more accidents. Yeah, it doesn't take a it, math. That's why there's more car that. crashes in California than North Dakota. Mm-hmm. Even though we have worse roads, worse weather, and worse drinking and driving rates. Uh, I'm not trying to go there. I'm trying to go with the fact of you'd think that with how bad our roads are and the fact that there's ice and I hear you, farmers driving on two hours sleep over a day. Mm -hmm. You'd think there'd be a higher accident rate. There's not. Per capita, there is. But absolute is always going to be lower because we don't have as many people. Mm -hmm. The statistics get easily, easily fudged. So I want to talk for a minute about like, because when we talk about legalization, it feels like this big like watershed moment. You know what I mean? I want to kind of talk for a little bit about what do you think if you're in your perfect world this gets passed with enough of a vote that the legislature doesn't whatever what does like what does a legal cannabis market look like in say downtown fargo do you you know what i mean what is so the first thing is what are we bringing local to jurisdictions will have the ability to opt out and set their own rules so fargo is going to look very different from grand forks which is going to look different from thompson which will look different from gackle which will look different from zap Mm-hmm. I don't think there will be a dispensary in Zap. I'm, I'm sorry for the three people <laughs> from Zap, North Dakota. I, I don't see it. Um, but in Fargo, it it'll, it'll be set by the city commission. We'll set the rules. And that's Grinberg, Mahoney, Strand, Gehrig, and Pipecorn. Pipecorn, yeah. Used to be able to know these off the top of my head. <laughs> um, and they'll set the rules, and they'll determine what it should look like in Fargo. Mm-hmm. Now, there will be a baseline set of rules, and that baseline is we have allotments. You have to get grow permits you have to get different retail permits different sizes it's all in the bill but the short version is the cities will set most of the rules Mm there will be an overarching framework if they want to defer to the state but they'll be free to set the rules i think to go case by case i think realistically fargo will have the most dispensaries for three reasons one there's the most people two statistically speaking it's the most we'll call it socially tolerant of it Mm -hmm. and three it's the place that has the most general support from the populace for it Mm -hmm. do i think it'll look well do i think hillsborough will have a dispensary probably not but maybe Mm -hmm. there's a couple thousand people in hillsborough um so maybe do i think grand forks will yes why not definitely bismarck maybe not Mm -hmm. so these local jurisdictions can set their own rules and that's the beauty of this bill. Mm-hmm. 
So it doesn't, we're not like forcing people I'm not people asking in. someone in Thompson to say, okay, you should have a dispensary in my town. Mm -hmm. What I'm asking them to do is say, okay, let's not throw people in prison for marijuana. Mm -hmm. And let them have the ability to legally buy it in Fargo. Mm -hmm. But to the bigger question there, what do the stores look like? Have you ever been to a jewelry store? Mm -hmm. You're Very married, nice. so I know you have. Yeah. Um, so I'll, it's nice display racks. Mm, very professional people there. Yeah. It's, it's people who are making a good living. It's people who are fairly knowledgeable in their field. And it's a nice store. Mm -hmm. um, the analogy I like to make is the Colorado ones look like jewelry stores, some of them. Mm -hmm. um, other ones look kind of more low-key and relaxed. We're definitely not going to have smoke lounges because it's not legal in the state, so that's mm -hmm. not going to be a thing. But I think it's possible that you'll see very nice stores. Will you have some that look like Atomic Coffee? Sure, maybe the more hipstery type stores too. But mm -hmm. you're going to get nice, real retail establishments. It's, it's like asking me what does a clothing store look like? Mm-hmm. It's going to be a store with shelves and racks designed to promote the product and make it look as good as possible within the limits of the law. Exactly. So we're seeing like, uh, I mean, I think that one of the it's things... It's not going to be Tokes R Us and Bismarck, folks. Yeah. And yeah. that is a real store and Ryan, I love you, but <laughs> your store looks kind of sketchy. It's not going to have that <laughs> aesthetic. I think that's a really big thing when we're talking about legalization is that people can't like wrap their minds around how it would be, you know, despite well, the fact that people... We live in Fargo, them. right? So Better we're for what, us. two, three hundred miles from Winnipeg? Oh, whereabouts, yeah. If you really are worried about what it'll look like, drive to Winnipeg for a weekend. Go into a dispensary. Mm-hmm. Oh. Or trip across Minnesota. Go to the northern or the upper You might Minnesota. have to have a medical card for that one. Uh, I think in the... No, no, because they got... Uh, they've got the waiting room, and then they've got the flower room. Yeah. But I know that in the UP, they have uh, they have a couple dispensaries for recreation. Okay. Finally. Then, okay, then go there. They are, in fact, <laughs> doing it. So, all right. So, we've covered a lot about what it's going to look like, all of that big stuff. What are... When you hear objections, or what are some of the most common concerns that you hear that you really wish that you could just kind of, you know, say it Satanism. once and get it out there? Satanism is, is a dumb one. There was literally, if, if you read the newspaper, there was literally a headline that said, Does marijuana cause Satanism? The answer is no, stupid. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, that's the answer. Um... <laughs> So let, let's throw that one away. Satanism. Workplace for safety is legi a legitimate concern. That's why we did the numbers. We did the research. Legalize ND 2020. We have it up. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not according to us. It's not according to some Leafly magazine. It's the U.S. Department of Labor Statistics. I trust them. Probably more than I should. But <laughs> if, if we're going to use a marker... Let's use a marker that almost everyone agrees on. Mm -hmm. So workforce safety. Driving under the influence. That's a big one. Mm -hmm. I, I understand the concern. I don't want people driving high. Mm -hmm. Will there be people who drive high? Yes. Yes, there will. Are there people already driving high? Mm. Also, yes. Mm -hmm. Just like there are still people driving drunk, despite the fact that it's a very serious offense on both and sides of the Red River. The reality is we have very strict drunk driving rules under mm -hmm. marijuana. It's officer field impairment test. And if, if you test positive, you're done. Mm -hmm. You get a DUI. But it is a legitimate concern. Is it as bad as people play it out to be? No. From the metrics we see, it's not a severe case. We don't see severe DUI incidents. Mm -hmm. It's not up per capita substantially. So mm -hmm. the data shows that it's not going to be a problem. I understand if you're like Bob Weefald that that doesn't change what happened. Mm -hmm. But again, Bob Weefold's son died in a legal in, in an illegal state at the time. Mm -hmm. and exactly. They were driving. I, it was either high or drunk, and they died anyway. Mm -hmm. And it was illegal there at the time. Mm -hmm. So, because the fact is, a lot of what people leads are to these going decisions. to make bad decisions. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, they are worse decisions when they're in a particularly bad and depressed state in life because i don't know for a possession charge they can't get a real job right for example individual responsibility does come into play. exactly like you know i mean don't, especially don't drive high kids yeah it's kind of like don't. one of the what we teach especially in rural parts of the state is you know 
treat every gun like it's loaded. Well, it is. But you don't hear everyone, but when someone gets shot in a horrible hunting accident, people take time to address and really bring it up with their friends, family, whoever they go hunting with. Hey, let's be careful. They don't go out and try and shut down shields for selling guns. No. You know? No, they don't. Um, and they shouldn't. Mm-hmm. Exactly. That would be that would be just I'll, as crazy I'll, as what I'll they're doing now. Commissioner Gehrig on this one. Part of freedom is the freedom to do dumb things. It's not smart to drink 12 shots at the Empire for $36. <laughs> it's probably not smart to smoke a bunch of pot. Mm -hmm. It's not going to harm you to a substantial degree. Mm -hmm. It's going to make you not make the best decisions that night. Mm -hmm. but you might eat way too many calories. Yeah, people are going to make bad decisions. The question is, how do we minimize that risk? And is marijuana worse than what's out there? No. Not by a long shot. Not to mention the things that people have done in order to get around the fact that they can't smoke weed. Well, you the know what thing, I mean? Well, horrible the, stories. The thing that bothers me is we have all this talk about marijuana. We don't have any talks about alcohol. That's true. Um, we really don't discuss that. I know that. in this state there's a high drinking rate. I know in the state there's a high domestic violence rate. My cousin in Virginia is likely getting divorced soon. They're certainly separated. Likely getting divorced as a result of domestic violence. Alcohol was definitely a factor in causing her to have her jaw split open, causing that man to break her leg. We don't blame alcohol for that. Mm -hmm. Should we? I don't think so. I mean, it's not... But let, let's... Let's put it in perspective, folks. According to the Center for Alcohol Abuse and Alcoholism, about one in every three violent crimes can be tracked to alcohol. <sighs> For marijuana, it's statistically within the realm of zero. You know, I, uh, that that says it right there. Mm -hmm. I think it was the before DC legalized, the chief of DC police came out and said that, you know, no one gets high and then immediate you know when someone gets really really high they might destroy a bag of chips they're not gonna cause a domestic yeah they don't beat their spouse they go to yeah bed. that's just they're to two totally totally different levels of risk involved and yet we and it's kind of like if you and go the to thing some is of i have to play defense about marijuana and Maybe the liquor industry should start to play some defense i hear you there has been a should, lot we should hold uh, for the sake of fairness, you should Quality. hold marijuana to the same standard that you hold Budweiser. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Are we worse than Budweiser? No. <laughs> and can I mention for a minute for all the hullabaloo you hear about, uh, you know, you heard it in 2018, I'm sure you'll hear it again about how, you know, some of these mar things look like they're marketed towards children and oh my gosh, yet you have like an entirely new generation of like not beer beer that's specifically marketed to taste like you know sparkling water you can get like literally any type of flavor infused crappy bottle of vodka or rum talk or about vodka or, popsicles or yeah vodka blow pops or whatever they're called they're like the you know what i'm talking about yeah like exactly almost. yeah but no you shouldn't be able to market towards kids and, and we're going to hold ourselves to a higher standard than liquor mm -hmm. we have a rule where it's a plain package box what does that mean it's going to be a white box maybe it's a bag or maybe it's a pill bottle depending on what form you're getting. And it will say the name, the percent THC, the amount, and that's it. That'd be a boring bottle of liquor right there. Imagine yeah. if every liquor but store But at the end of the like day, I, I think we should hold ourselves to a standard of not marketing towards kids. Yeah, absolutely. The science is and clear. And Legalize ND is holding themselves to that standard in our bill. Mm-hmm. So you are, in fact, doing, even though you have a more demonized and are seen generally as a you know, less child friendly or going above and beyond what currently exists right. in the state as, a, you know, unquestionably the number one choice of intoxicant in the state. I mean, right. we are the number one binge drinking state. Mm, you in know, America. a good, a good parallel to this example, hmm. vaping, vaping versus cigarettes, Ooh, marijuana versus alcohol is almost step for step, mark for mark the same path that vaping versus cigarettes is gone. Also elaborate on that. So we have a substance that's objectively safer that does not mark towards kids versus 
a substance that will put you in an early grave mm -hmm. and a substance that did. People forget Joe the Camel. Yep. You and I weren't alive. And the Marlboro Man. Yeah, maybe maybe a couple people on the show were alive for that. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking Marlboro Man. I'm talking like the camel and the candy. Yep, yep. Joe the camel, the little cartoon talking character. About, yeah, they used, to have, they used to call them candy cigarettes, not candy yeah. sticks. I mean, and people get mad about vaping having a Darth Vader character. <sighs> and they don't even have that anymore in North Dakota. I mean, they still do in Cali, but that's what's happening. They they see an alternative that seeks to threaten their business model and they regulate its death. Mm -hmm. Vaping has for all intents and purposes been banned in quite a few States. Yep. And some States have gone so far as to make it possession illegal. Like you can't even bring it in from out of state. You'll and who are they protecting? They're protecting <sighs> cigarette big, companies, big entitled lobbying interests. Mm hmm. Which is what a lot of this really comes down to. Is a lot of it's not about public safety, right? It's a money making was. scheme. Never was. It just. I mean, look look up what Nixon's advisor mm -hmm. said about the war on drugs. Yep, he said. Don't, I'm not going to quote him. I don't think you should either. Let them read it themselves. Let funny. them go Google it and read it. Draw your own conclusions. Mm -hmm. That's what it was about. Yep. And people in the movement know what I'm talking about. But that's what it always was about. Look at the testimony done in the 1930s in the Senate and the House to try and ban marijuana federally. Yeah, look I at mean, some of the listen to that. Videos. If like if you think I've said some crazy things on this show, there's I, I don't want to get like I said like he said Google it, but uh, apparently marijuana had some metaphysical aspects to it. Well, it's the same with the satanic stuff that people. Warden Satrin brought out. They go to absurd fear mongering, mm -hmm. and they they hope. That because there's someone with authority and someone that you should trust in your mind, because we, we want to trust the police chief. Mm -hmm. We want to trust the warden. We'd, we'd like to think they have our best interests at heart. Ideally, yeah. And they come from a position of trust and they abuse that trust. Mm -hmm. And they're care. banking on the fact that you will trust them and not do your own research. Mm -hmm. and that's exactly what it comes down to. And like we said, follow that money because it seems like especially in a state like north dakota there's a lot of potential benefits to be accrued by it and a lot of potential savings and yet it's like it's like they've got nothing left but the fear mongering you well, know what i mean they don't have any other arguments measure three they brought out the lawyers and they argued it wasn't the best written bill do, mm -hmm. do i still stand by that bill to this day yes but let bygones be bygones mm-hmm passes in the past and all that there's there's an old saying when the law is on your side you pound on the law when the facts are on your side you pound on the facts when nothing is on your side you pound on the table and yell and scream mm -hmm. that's where we're at we're at the yelling and screaming stage that is true i i guess that's kind of a i guess that's a win for us in the grand scheme well of it's only a win if people don't buy into it and that is true. And I get the change is scary. Mm -hmm. I get that there are a lot of people alive today who their entire life were told that marijuana legalization would lead to disaster and doom. Do the research. Look up the states that are legalized. You live in a time where you have the ability to go see what it looks like in another place that won't affect you. Mm -hmm. If exactly. you are really curious... It's not that expensive to go to Winnipeg. It's not unreasonable to go to Colorado. Mm -hmm. If you're very worried, go and see. And get a flight walk into a, Walk into a dispensary. Look see it up if it's on a YouTube. Bunch of sketchy. Well, seeing is believing. A YouTube video could be staged. Okay. I'm trying to give every benefit of the doubt here. If you are truly concerned and you don't want to believe what legalization advocates say, Go see it yourself. Mm hmm That is true. Make the informed decision. Yeah. And can I just say for a second while we're getting to the end of this here, I really find it like absurd on things I hate is when you're talking to people about it and they say, well, I don't want any more of it in here. I don't want it any more accessible, whatever. When we live in such an era where you can go on numerous uh, Chinese and there's just well, like... Well, let's not even do Chinese. You can get in your car, drive to Winnipeg, and buy it. Yeah. 
I mean, but if people want it, it's very easy to get. Mm -hmm. It's easier than it's ever been because what's Colorado from here? A thousand miles? Yeah, we're about it's about a twelve hour drive from here to Denver. Twelve thirteen. So you can go a day in a car and go get it. Mm -hmm. If they want it, you ain't going to stop them. Exactly. It's. I mean, you and know, maybe permission doesn't work. Maybe the police car catches them. Statistically, it's not going to. Mm -hmm. You need a lot of officers to be searching. You, you would need the car. police to be watching people, not watching out for people. Mm -hmm. and that's not a world I want to live in. Exactly. That is a. I mean, that's kind of the logical endpoint of all of this. Yeah. All of these war on drugs policies, right? It, it used to be that government, presumably, and I know you'll take offense. This as a libertarian. But it right. used to be that government watched out for people. Mm -hmm. Now they're watching people. Mm -hmm. And that's very scary. And is that is that really the world that we want to live in? Because no. that doesn't really sound like a country I don't want justice live in for all. I don't want to live in that world. Mm -mm. But mm. I'll ask many of you out there as we close this one out if that's something that you want to you wanna deal with. Because uh, it's only going to get worse before it gets better. And they're going to continue to ruin lives over the charade. And you're going to pay something. for it. Yep. Every step of the way. So one more time, this has been David Owen with Legalize ND. Um, one quick thing, plug the I want to plug the website. LegalizeND2020.com is where you can see our website, see what we're doing. Uh, we have information on where to sign. You can join our mailing, mailing list to stay up to date. Yep. LegalizeND2020.com. And we're out there on Facebook as well. Legalize ND. Yep, they've got... It's not hard to find us. <laughs> Look it up. Please, please Google it's it. It's legalize, L-E-G-A-L-I-Z-E -E space, N as in North, D as in Dakota on Facebook. L-E-G-A-L-I-Z-E-N-D-2020.com is the website. Legalize, then N as in North, D as in Dakota.com. Yep. 2020.com. Check it out, folks. Thank you so much for joining us, David. Thanks and thank for you me, for everyone that's listening. It's Have a great rest of your been a day. Good time. Hey there, I want to thank our guest one more time, David Owen of Legalize ND, for coming on and speaking some truth to all of us. And I was thinking about a song for today, and you know, I know I've picked a lot of angry and you know resentful sounding music because I'm an angry and resentful sounding person, rightfully so. But I decided we're talking about something a little more laid back, pretty non-contentious, talking about legalizing a freaking plant, which is apparently a big debate that we have to have in the two decades in the 21st century, because that's how advanced we are. And it just kind of put me in the mood for something a little more relaxed and a little bit more uh, mind your own damn business. So with that, I have Illegal Smile by John Prine. You know it, you love it, and... uh Let's maybe make a couple of smiles. Can we just like, can we just legalize fun? Can we do that in this country? With a, a just begging request to legalize fun in this country. This has been the Crazy Libertarian. Thank you for tuning in. This is John Prine, Illegal Smile.